you guys welcome back to my channel if you are new here my name is Lamade and I am currently a banker a property investor as well as a content creator there's a sum of the stuff I don't like to kind of define myself in three back in today's video I wanted to reflect back on my 2021 goals and then kind of speak about the, some of the things that I'm going to be looking forward to um, achieving in 2022 for the past two years I've been using notion to kind of set my goals um, it's basically a digital app that just allows, allowed you to create things and I started using that because with physical planners I just couldn't keep them for one like I really I'm someone who kind of like likes to look back on you know where was I like this time two years ago three years ago with physical planners I always threw them out with digital planners as well you can always edit them as you go along if you set a goal in January and it turns out by March you actually want to tweak that goal slightly and um, you can do that without having to cross things out and all of those sort of stuff and this year actually the help of a developer as well made a really 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 good digital planner um, for myself and we've also created a template version that can be shared with anyone who also wants to try it out so it actually launches today so if you want a um, digital planner for the rest of your life because you only have to purchase it once and that's the great thing about digital you purchase it once and you can reuse it every single year um, then definitely click the link in my bio that is what I'm going to be using throughout the video because I know someone will ask if I don't mention it it is the intentional digital life plan I know that some people don't like to look back because it's kind of like the past is the past but I genuinely believe that you can't make a change for your future or a better change if you don't see what happened beforehand you have to look back and then so that you can make sure that what you do going forward is different and so this year I was like I'm going to start my reflection super early so if you guys watch my um Jamaica vlog obviously that I started journaling and reflecting there I guess that was also my birthday as well so I was ready in that reflective mood of what do I want for the next year um so yeah so if you guys are going to go ahead and do your reflection as well I would say to start super early so that you don't rush it so getting started on the reflection I would say there are five main areas of my life so five main life areas and then within those I have like different focus areas um but if we get started on career first I would say that this year, reflecting back on like my career goals, um, one major goal that I had, which is actually quite funny because, and this is the, this is what I'm saying is the strength of digital planning. This was a goal that when I started the year, like in January the first, 2021, I had no career goals. I just couldn't. I don't. I don't know. I just like I don't actually know what I want to achieve in my career this year. Um, and then as we went on through the year, I think it was around midway through the year, I was like, actually, I really want to do a business course with Harvard Business School um, online. And I signed up to that, I paid for that, I did that. And that was a huge achievement for me, not just because it's like, oh, Harvard Business School, whatever, but because halfway through, I was like, oh my God, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, I already work, like you guys already know, like my days on average are like 12 hours. So a week, that's like about 60 hour, I'm working like 60 hour weeks. And then I have a course that requires me to then do extra work for like 15 hours each week. And then I had three exams at the end of it. And it was fun, like the first couple of weeks, I was like, oh yeah, like I'm enjoying this. I'm really getting into this. Halfway through, I was like, oh my God, I don't think I can do this. Like. And it was so, and the thing, it was so easy to like pull out because it's not a degree. Like no one's gonna be checking for me. But then I was like, no. I remember that I did this for a reason because I really want to move more into like the. Because I really realized that I was more of a business minded sort of person, more so than a finance um, minded sort of person. And so I really wanted to get some qualifications that would reflect that. Um, and so yeah, I completed them. I did my three exams when I got back from Jamaica. So I think that I'm really happy that I did that. And I think it will be really um, useful in my career, but also I feel like the person that I became because of that course, that resilience and that the consistency and the time management that I had to develop to complete the course was a goal well done. Like, like with regards to work work, which I know I haven't done as, m as much careers content lately, but it will be coming back next year. So if you have any suggestions or videos that you would like me to do when it comes to careers, or whether, it's, is, whether it is that you want me to bring some people onto the channel or whatever, um, definitely comment down below. So yeah, so with work, I finished my year and a half rotation in TMT. So that's technology, media, and telecommunications. Um, so that is like, 
that is one of the industries I feel like across corporate finance that is buzzing. So that was a highly coveted team that I got placed in and I'm so happy. And it's one of the hardest teams to be on as well. Like we work one of the longest hours and I did a year and a half, you know? But anyways, the point was I, su I successfully got my first choice of rotation for my second rotation of my graduate scheme i got my first choice which is a team that looks more at fintechs so still in that space they do other stuff as well but it's still it was what i really wanted to do because i felt like there was a good overlap but then there's also a good opportunity for learning and i really want to learn more about like these startups and stuff so that i'm really happy about as well and then youtube as well selected for something so amazing you guys so 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 amazing i think i got told like two um two months ago but I signed an NDA so in January it will be out and you guys will know what that is and um, honestly it's just it's amazing I can't wait for you guys to find out what it is so overall for my um, career I would give it a four out of five um, I would say just a four out of five because um there was some more stuff that i really wanted to do and more like the, i feel like i could have done a bit more stuff in like the business side of things and the side hustle side of things like maybe start some more um and i didn't even have career goals when the year started so that wasn't really like yeah for okay you guys so moving on from my own career development to how you can develop your career this video is actually sponsored by datacat which is an online learning platform that aims to make learning data easier so new data skills including stuff like coding or using apps like Tableau. Um, they have over 350 courses from beginner to pro and they're all designed by experts. So you'll see like there's like introduction to Python, introduction to R, data visualization, and so many other courses like that. Um, and I can definitely see from my workplace that like loads of this stuff are actually filtering into sectors that I even initially think that they would come into so quickly. So I definitely feel like it's a good skill to have if you are looking to get into the job market or if you want to elevate in the job market. And if you want to start, but you don't know what course to try, where to start, they actually do have an assessment so you can get personalized um, learning recommendations. So definitely check that out if you're confused um but yeah 2021 we are taking our career and development to the next level you can use the link in my description box to get the first chapter of any course for free Move on to finances. This has been this has been a really good area as well. I rated this a four out of five as well. Um, I hit six figures this year. Um, I did not think I can say I didn't think that I would hit six figures, but the goals that I set at the end of last year, where I was like five figures for each um, income stream that I had, um, it was definitely going to lead me to. to to 100k but I just wasn't tracking it now and the thing is I didn't even know it was like maybe like October and I still didn't even have a clue that you were literally on your way to hit six figures and then I was just like let me actually just check things can I mention this maybe on Instagram and I was literally like let me look at all the income streams that I have how much are they making me and how much time am I putting into them and then I realized I did this for all of my income streams then I was like hold on first of all I'm like a few thousand pounds away from um, six figures this was in like early october maybe end of september now, when i did that assessment i was like i need to get so much better at tracking my income um and actually setting monthly goals for myself of what i want to earn each and every single month and this is the also the thing that i love about having side hustles and business is you can actually set goals for yourself when you work a um, you know a salary job you know what it's going to be every single every single month in 2022 and that's definitely what i'm going to be using to track my income so that i can actually see all the progress that I'm making. Obviously for investments, I closed on my property this year, my first property, which is a two bed, um, semi-detached house in the West Midlands, which was great. But to be honest, it's not really like, I wouldn't, it was not really the accomplishment of the year because I really closed that deal in December. 2020 if you guys have watched like the property um vlogs i vlogged the whole entire process i mean i, mean, I still haven't even been in the property like ever um and the tenants are all in and everything but that was still an, an achievement in itself and i started the process of my next property which you guys saw like a quick phone call in the jamaica vlog you can watch that if you haven't watched it just move on to personal development um i think i gave myself a rating of maybe three out of five not that high i think I'm gonna call it personal
personal and development rather than personal development. Halfway through the year, I redid my room. That was just such a like a, a mark of a transition in my mindset. And this year, my mindset has developed so, 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 so much. I definitely had a more trying mental health year than that like previous years, or maybe I'm just saying that because like, it's more current. Um, but I feel like, oh my God, my mindset has developed so much. Like the type of development, the type of mindset development that you know because of it, your life going forward is going to be so different. Um, and that was just thanks to conversations that I've been having in books and podcasts, recommendations. You guys always ask for that stuff, but I also always share that stuff. Um, and also, at, if you pick up the Intentionality Playbook, which is the free ebook that comes along with the planner, it has podcasts and book recommendations at the end. Um, but I just kind of wish that I invested more, like more money particularly into my development. I'd say travel is part of this area as well. And this year, I only went on one trip, but it was a lit trip. I've been speaking about it already throughout the whole vlog, so you guys already know what that is. So moving on to health and fitness. Why is this, this area, I think only in 2020 did this area like score above three. Every other year in my life, I feel like it just never scores very highly. And I think it's because I have, um, what do you call I have the benefit of just being naturally slim. So it's not really the health side, I think it's more the fitness side. Because actually I did a health assessment this year and everything came back like great. Like everything was where it needed to be, which I was really surprised about because I thought that maybe I would have like something, but my hyper pressure, like my the blood that they did, I don't know, my urine sample, my BMI, like everything was like perfect. Like the doctor was like really happy with it. But so the health side was okay. And I also made like major changes to my diet. Like the health side is good. It's the fitness side. Like the fitness side, I did a lot more yoga this year. But the, where the fitness is just not there. It's so funny because in the vlog, in the Jamaica vlog, we were like, yeah, we're gonna go to and especially Victoria's one, she added in the clip, we were like, yeah, I'm gonna go to the gym every single day. First of all, I hadn't even been to the gym the whole year, so I don't know why I thought I was gonna go every single day on holiday. Um, and we never went. We went for two minutes, <laughs> for like five minutes, and then decided to go to yoga and never went back. It's a major life lesson in this area. One being, cannot enjoy wealth without health. But really and truly, if your health is suffering, your mental health, your physical health, you won't be able to enjoy the money that you have. So there's no point striving for wealth, but then having your health deteriorate at the same time. Two, mental health affects your physical health. Like how you are over here. Like I remember my, my accountability partner, Vera, she said something with me. I think it was at the start of the year and I literally never forget that because I always like overthink and then obviously that's in your mentals, but it always affects me physically like when I'm like just not thinking in the most positive way. Um, and she was basically, I can't remember the stats, I'm just gonna make it up. But it was like one one minute of, Vera, if you're watching this, put it in the comments. It was like one minute of like mental stress or something like affects your body for five minutes. Um, so even if it's just one minute, the effect on your body is so much more. And I definitely had that. I think I've, I don't know if I've actually spoken about this on my channel, channel before, but when I started work, I had a lot of anxiety and that's obviously in your mentals, but then it started to manifest itself physically. And I would get like these tension headaches, like at the back of my head. Oh, this means I'm talking too much. I feel like, like, but I think for me, my ability to get into the gym and be fit would probably go hand in hand with my overall discipline for my life. Um, that's just a personal thing, I feel like. And so now I want to speak to you guys about my 2022 goals, tasks, and habits. Um, every goal that I set, I like to at least have tasks and habits, if not or, because I feel like it just makes sense for me. Like I'm gonna take it by life area, but then also get into the focus areas as well because I set my goals on the focus area level. If you wanna know more about this breakdown of goals, tasks, and habits, like the intentionality playbook, and all you have to do is sign up to the mailing list and you would get that paper for free. Check your junk. If you, if, you, if, if, if you don't see it, when you sign up for it, check your junk. It will be under FITC. FITC stands for Focus, Intentionality, Discipline, and Consistency. And I know that once I have those four things on lock, listen, baby, I'm gonna be a different person. I'm not gonna go through all of my goals for the year. I'll just go through a few, especially to kind of also show you guys like this goal, task, habit breakdown. Okay, so let's start with the personal and development. I'll just share two goals that I have under there. So travel again. Um, oh God. 
COVID permitting, I want to go again to two non non European countries. I feel like I've been to, <laughs> I feel I like prior to the Caribbean this year. I feel like a lot of my trips, maybe if not all, but most of them, like eighty percent, have been within Europe. So if you're like in the US, this is like always taking trips but to like different states but not really branching outside of the US. I really want to go to South Africa. Um Blood and Water on Netflix. If you have watched if you haven't watched it, go and watch it. That was like the part that like feels like yeah no I need to go. So some tasks on this will be at least to plan the trips. Um, and then I would say that the habit for this was to continue to save. I want to invest at least ten thousand pounds into my development. One of the things that I want to do and this is actually inspired by one of you guys' comments. I don't remember like the person's name but they are they mentioned that I was always talking about the Life Coach School podcast which again is a podcast recommendation they asked me if I was part of the scholars program I think it's called like the scholars program which is Brooke Castillo who is the podcast um, lead that is like her coaching group I think something like that um, and I was like oh my god that's a good idea like why haven't I actually thought to join the group so I think I'm actually gonna join it's the membership is $300 per month so so it's gonna be an investment, but like, listen, for the results I want for myself in 2022, I am going to have to make these financial investments. And this is what I, this is what I even, this was probably the, I think the first point on my um, six key habits that made me six figures video is financial investment. Habit that's probably gonna be associated with that is me remembering that I need to attend those sessions. If I'm gonna pay $300 a month, I need to attend every single session every single month for us to like personal and development as well something that i want to do which i did i did a good job at that this year and i want to do even more next year is further cut down my consumption of social media um, i feel like they make it so hard because they're always introducing new apps all the time i have not downloaded tiktok i have not become a tiktoker so i feel like that has saved me time but then sometimes i feel like as a creator should i be on there but then i know that like ultimately I don't want to spend too much time on social media, especially as a consumer. If I want to be spending time on there, I want to be more of a producer. And I'm already happy that I've, I've already made that switch in a sense. And I'm definitely more of a producer than I was you know, two years ago. Um, but I still feel like I consume too much. The way that I assess that is if I already say that in my day, like, oh my God, just one extra hour, two extra hours, and I would accomplish so much more. But then I've been two hours on social media per day. It's not really given what it's supposed to give. The task for that is to reinstall, not to reinstall, but to reuse the, um, the Apple app blockers. For Apple, you can actually set like time limits on particular apps. I give you that reminder that you spent too much time on WhatsApp today, babe. It's time to get off, it's time to get off. Um, and then the habit for that, which is a habit that I've actually developed, that I developed maybe, I think it's probably this year, or maybe last year, is to, I always delete the Instagram app from my phone if it's not, if I'm not at a point where I'm producing. So if I know that I need to post stories, I'll have the app on my phone. If I'm not, if I know that I'm not posting anything for like the whole week, I will delete the app. I will still use it on my web but it's, it's so much less entertaining on web and so I don't find myself spending as much time on it so, and moving into like the finances and investments board for investments I want to close again um, on another buy to let I want to close on another buy to let this year and then I also want to get into another new strategy um, that I was like kind of mentioning on Instagram I want to get into a new strategy and I want to get multiple properties under that strategy as well to really help to increase my cash flow from property I've there are loads of tasks that need to be done under those. Um, first, like, concluding on this first property, there are so many things that need to be done. Again, I will be using my board just like I did with my first property to track all the different actions that I need to make to close on the house. I'll probably use the one, I used Notion as well for my last property. So I'll probably use it again for this one and track all the different tasks that I need to do. When it comes to income as well, I want to have two well-established and cash flow high offline income stream so those those are income streams that don't require this youtube channel to help to propel um i have the task i know what the task and the habits are going to be for those i'm not going to share them right now for the relationship side of things um i would break this down into so many things i've also added spiritual into this as well i'm not really going to go into all of that on this channel because that's something that i don't really like to bring to youtube as much but um one thing that i do want to do that i feel like 
I just, I need to do, is to just be more, I don't want to change who I am, because I know that I'm naturally introverted, I'm naturally not the person who's going to approach someone to make friends, that's just not me, but I do want to make a conscious effort, especially to people who I admire from a bar people who i watch people have been subscribed to for ages to just interact with them or their content a lot more i feel like it's just a good habit to just develop because i will love someone but i won't say anything and now that i'm a, i'm a creator as well like i know that how much it means to me when other people interact with my my stuff and i'm like oh wow like I really appreciate that you just wasn't like a silent consumer but you actually let me know um and so i want to do that for people who i genuinely follow and i genuinely like and i've been watching for a while and you know don't say anything but also even like people on social media just like trying to communicate like the thought of it is already making me like oh but i actually just like trying to not trying to make new friends but just like letting people know how i feel about them especially if it's positive things it's just like you know um at the associate level just like checking up on them and stuff i really need to do better at that i need to force myself to do that um i feel like it'll be good at like for like expanding my network and just just good practice of just like you know appreciating people a lot more so those are all the goals that i'm going to share for my five main life area and like once you complete once you complete doing all your goals on notion like there is a goals page on there and then if you choose the right pictures um because it's in the gallery format it can almost look like a vision board um so you can see visually like what you what you want to achieve by the fact that notion kind of gives that kind of imagery overview as well as well as allows you to do the nitty gritties of not just setting your goals but then creating tables and charts and pages that allows you to do the work um, and track the work that needs to happen for you to actually achieve your goals. So this is a good digital planner. Um, it's not a good, it's an amazing digital planner. I love it so much. This is something that like I was thinking of doing for myself and I'm so happy that I've made it available to people. Um, and I know that it's going, that if you actually use it, um, it will change your life. It will change your life. It will force you to be more focused, more intentional, more disciplined, more consistent, um, and to just track your goals in a streamlined way you can use on your phone, on your tablet, on your laptop. Um, I would recommend no laptop. Don't try and buy it again on December 31st thinking it will be ready by January the 1st, especially if you haven't used Notion before. If you have used Notion and you do have a Notion board already, but like for a lot of people they're like, oh my god, I have a Notion, but it's nowhere near this good, you can copy like your tables and stuff from your old board into this new into like the focus areas. If you sign up to the mailing list and get the free ebook, let me know how you found it. And so even if you don't get the planner, I would just get the free ebook anyways, just so that you can set better goals for this year. Even me myself, I wanna set even better goals for the following year because the following year is, the 2022 is about to be my best year yet. Want to have a transformational year, like, yeah, let me not even say too much. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.